Well, good morning, everybody. And it's so good to be here uh, gathered together. And uh, let us open this morning in prayer. Oh, good and gracious God, we come together. We come together rejoicing in the new life of all the flowers and the trees that are blooming and budding all around us. And we come rejoicing in the new life that you have given to us. How gracious you are to us, O oh Lord, that you are present here. And we welcome your Holy Spirit presence here with us. And we pray that you would open our eyes to your presence, to your glory, and give us eyes to see and ears to hear, and increase our faith that we may obediently follow you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. All right, we're going to uh, join together in singing. Uh, this morning, there's a sweet, sweet spirit. Just give me a moment to switch over to that. Let us now confess our faith according to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna unmute everybody uh, here for a moment and ask you um, how can how can you praise God uh, this day? Well, Dave, I God that I was able to go in and visit with Wade yesterday. They gave me special permission, so Chris and I were there with him for about four hours yesterday. So I thank God that I was able to do that. Praise God for that. And how is awesome. he doing? Not sure. Not sure she's there. But um, Daniel, um, you were you were going to say something? Yeah. So I don't know how well y'all can see this. this. Is a picture of my daughter. 
Oh, class of 2020 at Tennessee Wesleyan. And she got a bachelor's in education, K through eight, with a minor in religion and philosophy. Wow. Highest honors. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I'm uh, thankful because uh, Tuesday we're going to, Troy and I are going to celebrate our 47th wedding anniversary. Uh, if we can find a way to celebrate. <laughs> Oh, you will find a way, and congratulations, we celebrate that with you, Bonnie and Troy. I have a praise. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, this is my friend I came to Ohio to see that had the test. And oh. it turned oh. out well. So we're up here in Ohio, but and we're all joining the church, and we're going to drive to Libby's church from 11 after we leave here. Okay. Well, praise God. Well. Everybody. So she's doing good. Thank you for the prayers. <laughs> All right, prayer concerns. Let us let us do um, remember uh, the lift up aid and uh, and that his blood pressure would get to the point where he can transition into um, the rehab facility. Uh, let us let's continue to to pray for. Um, uh, Nancy and her friend and, and test uh, and, and procedures. Uh, Lord, um, let, we, we just pray that the Lord's healing power would be at work. Um, let, us, let us remember the very obvious, the, the, the virus that is keeping us separated now. Uh, and let us continue to pray against this intrusion of, of the world. And, and let us pray for wisdom as we begin opening back up that we will, um, that we will do so wisely uh, and cautiously. Uh, and let us pray for the day when, when we can come back together again in worship. Uh, I understand that um, we are starting to open up, so uh, that is hopeful for us as Holstonians. I think Bobby has a, a prayer concern. I'd ask that you all remember my, my great aunt, Judy Watson. She uh, has a brain tumor and will have surgery in the morning. I'm not sure. I didn't see, I didn't see um, Bobby's face pick up on active speaker. So I'm not sure if y'all heard that or not, but her. Yeah, her we did. Aunt yeah, Judy we heard. Watson. Okay. Uh, just with the Judy. Um, are there others? Yeah, we're Hi, Dave. This is Linda. Okay. An update on Wade. His ankle has not healed correctly, and he is scheduled for surgery tomorrow. So um, we don't know if he's going to have it or not. I haven't talked to the cardiologist and anesthesiologist. We'll talk to them first before he can do that. But please remember him because he's in a very weakened condition. Okay. Um, you were cutting out uh, some, Linda. Did you say he's having surgery or he's having the ankle set or what? No, the ankle did not uh, heal like it should have. So they want to do surgery on him tomorrow morning. But we have not talked to the, the actual, the cardiologist or the anesthesiologist yet. So we'll be waiting on that. Okay. So certainly lift up Wade for this uh, possible surgery that's scheduled for tomorrow. I have several prayer requests. Uh, my best friend, uh, Peggy, who's in El Paso, Texas, had a mammogram that showed uh, a spot. Then she had an ultrasound and she's seeing her uh, OBGYN on Tuesday morning to discuss whether this is cancer and what they're going to proceed, how they're going to proceed. Uh, secondly, uh, my Oliver Springs family, uh, and I'm, I'm sure I know Suzanne knows these people, so that's why, I'm a, why I asked if she was on. Uh, Kay and Johnny uh, lost their only remaining child Wednesday oh. night. Craig was killed by a hit and run driver uh, 
we are, Sandra called me and she was not sure whether Craig was crossing the street or driving a car. Uh, it was teenagers that were drag racing. They lost control of the car and they hit Craig. Um, oh my gosh. They had when lost was that? Friday, Friday night in Oliver Springs. <coughs> so please pray for this family. They lost a child to leukemia when she was in her teens. And now they've lost the other child and he was their caretaker. So uh, it's Kay and Johnny Nichols. Uh, the third thing is, third thing is that my uh, brother's defying a court order this morning and opening his church in Pennsylvania. And we're concerned that he may be arrested but he is going to have a church service in his larger church. So uh, he feels that this is what God wants him to do when uh, he's doing it. And that takes care of all of it, I think. <laughs> Are there any others? I want y'all to continue praying for ba uh, baby Everly. Uh, she is not doing as well as they wanted to, her to do. She needs the heart surgery, but she keeps spiking a temp. And, uh, they think it may be her kidneys that it's causing that, some infection. Um, but she is growing. She has gained weight. Uh, in the pictures they showed the other day, that there was a video on Facebook, and she was so alert. She was following uh, sounds and you know looking around and stuff but um she's a really really sick little baby so we need to remember her and also remember her parents all right let us go to the lord in prayer with these request oh lord god we we come before your majesty before your glory we come in awe and wonder of who you are <clears throat> we come awestruck that a God of all holiness and a God of all love and a God of all power would call us unto himself. That you would even call us little children. When, when we have gone astray, when we have turned our backs on you and we have sinned against you and we have run away from your presence, but your infinite love pursued us and you came to live among us, to walk uh, amongst us in the person of Jesus Christ, to suffer our sufferings, to suffer on behalf of us, all because you loved us too much to let us go. And so you could make a way to bring us back into your presence. And yet you still give us a choice. You still give us that choice to, to receive that gift of grace or not. And so we come before you saying, here we are. We thankfully receive your gift. And we come before you burdened for those who have not yet accepted this offer of grace. And we pray on their behalf and we pray on our own behalf that we would never tire of sharing your good news story until all the world shall hear and have an opportunity to respond to your offer of grace. Lord God, we come recognizing that you are a God of health and wholeness, that your grand plan of redemption includes restoring and renewing and redeeming all of creation back from its pattern of death. And so we cry out in this time of a pandemic disease and we speak against it 
in the powerful name of Jesus. And we say, you're not welcome on this earth. Be gone. And we pray for the healing of those who have been touched by this disease. Lord God, we come and we, we pray against the sickness of cancers. And we proclaim healing in the name of Jesus for those that are going through treatment and even for those who are, are, are going through the diagnostic test to, to determine. We pray that your healing touch would go ahead of those tests. We pray, we pray for Wade and for his blood pressure and for his, his, uh, his ankle. And we pray, Lord, I, I pray that the surgery wouldn't have to happen. I pray that he would have healing without surgery. But Lord, if it is in your plan for him to have surgery, bring him safely through. And we thank you for answering that prayer. Lord, we, we lift up baby Everly. We just pray that, that your healing hand be upon that young child and bring wholeness and bring hope to that family. Lord, we, we lift up Judy and we lift up Kay and Johnny. And we lift up Peggy. And Lord, in each and every one of these brothers and sisters, you know their deep need, their deep need for healing, their deep need for peace, for reconciliation, even for understanding. Lord, may it be so in your name. Lord, we, we lift up Bonnie's brother. We, we lift up pastors everywhere, and we, we just pray for wisdom. We pray for divine wisdom on how we are to proceed. And let us be places of healing and wholeness in a time of sickness. But let us never shrink back from sharing the greatest story of life there ever was. And that is the story of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this story and that you've invited us to be a part of it. Lord, we seek an awakening to your glory and grace. Will you come and will you revive us again? Oh, Lord, we have heard of your renown and we stand in awe, oh, Lord, of your work. In our own day, revive it. In our own time, will you make it known? And in wrath, will you remember mercy upon this world? Lord, we come together as your beloved children, praying together in one voice the prayer of your church through the ages when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the King, glory, and glory and the power forever. Amen. Amen. As we come into the idea of sharing the... Um, the um, glory of God and the good news of God. One of the ways in which we do this is to share a bit of the resources God has given to us so that we can open up the floodgates of the kingdom of God upon this world. And so uh, as we um, listen to this music from Esther, uh, let me just remind you of numerous ways to continue giving to, to the Lord's work through the church. Amen.
All right, I want to share with you this morning, reading from John chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. If you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him, and it doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. And when I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in the Father and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to each and every one of them. This is the true word of God for the beloved people of God. Praise be to God. We've got, um, we've got Pentecost Sunday coming up. We're, we're in the season of Easter, and we, we uh, have celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ and his victory over death, and, and, and we continue celebrating that throughout the entire Easter season. But... This season is, is the time that Jesus came back and appeared to his disciples, appeared to them in the upper room in Jerusalem, appeared to them on the road to Emmaus, appeared to them on the shores of Galilee, even cooked and ate fish with them, and, and, and kind of gave his final instructions. And we're coming up on, on, um, on the, the Sunday when we'll recognize the ascension of Jesus Christ and, and how the disciples then went back from the Mount of Olives where that ascension occurred back into Jerusalem. Um, and, and there waited the coming of the Holy Spirit. And I really want to really want to focus on that Holy Spirit and the coming of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is how God empowers us to be the church. It is how God uses us through giving us gifts from the Holy Spirit. And, and as we consider on how to reset church in a post-COVID world, and unlocking our future as a renewed church, we really need to rely upon the Holy Spirit, not upon ourselves, not upon our own wisdom, our own ideas, but on the guidance and the empowerment and the equipping of the Holy Spirit. As I was um, going through stuff in my office this week, I um, was going through some of the knickknacks. Some of you know I have, I have a a blue table in my office that I've got various things on. And, and, and I picked up here this, um, this carbide lamp uh, left over from old caving days. And um, I remember my, my, uh, my first time in a real cave. I mean, I, I had been in, in Ruby Falls and caves like that before where you go down with a, a tour guide and, and you, you, you have lights along the way and, and everything. But my first time really spelunking was, was at Tennessee Tech when my, my first quarter there uh, for PE credit, I took uh, backpacking as a class. And um, how, how fun was that? Uh, to get college credit to go on a backpacking trip and and uh, did a number of things in that class learned a lot but one of the things we did was uh, we went spelunking in a cave out near Virgin Falls and uh, that was my first introduction to to really um, getting down in the dirt and crawling through a cave and and after that um, with my work with uh, Camp Lookout as a counselor I guess who got assigned to do the caving camps uh, I got to do it and, and I was thrilled about that because when it was uh, 105 degrees in, in the Georgia summers outside. I could spend the afternoon in a 55 degree cave, and I like that. But anyway, uh, so I have this this carbide lamp, uh, and, and the the idea here is it's got two different chambers. It's got this upper chamber that you open here on top, pour water into it. Uh, and you've got this lower chamber that you fill up with uh, calcium carbide and a, a little drip valve. 
And the idea is when you drip water into calcium carbide, it's gonna make acetylene gas. It's gonna come out and burn as your lamp. Um, very useful in this area, in the, in the, in the mines. Um, and uh, even though today uh, we use electric flashlights and electric headlamps, uh, a lot of cavers still prefer this, and I'll share with you why that is uh, in just a little bit. But Jesus tells us, he, he's preparing his disciples that, that he's, he's about to leave them, and also at the same time says, I'll never leave you and forsake you. He's telling them, I'm going to leave you physically, but I will send another advocate. I will ask the Father, and he will send another advocate. An advocate is one who, who acts in, in our defense or pleads our cause, basically is one who helps us. Might even say one who shows us the way or warms our soul when we're unsure of who we are. You know, the thing about these carbide lamps is, is the, the chemical reaction that goes on in these chambers is an exothermic reaction. That means it produces heat. And, and that's, why, that's one of the reasons why cavers still prefer this over an electric lamp. You know, I can, I can wear a, uh, uh, an LED headlamp that'll last a long time and be really bright and produces no heat. But when you're in a 55 degree cave, sometimes you want a little bit of extra heat. Um, and uh, even when miners would get cold, they could, they could drape uh, something over them to uh, trap in that heat from the lamp and warm their bodies. Also, when, when, um, when um, explorers are mapping out a cave and, and doing surveying inside of a cave, they need a surveying point. And, uh, and this, this makes fairly sooty flame, and so they could, they could use the soot coming off of the flame to mark a surveying point on the wall as a uh, survey to draw the map of, of the cave. And, and, and so in that kind of way, this is a whole lot like the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is Jesus with us now, not only with, with us, but within us. The Holy Spirit leads us into, into all of truth, just like marking a cave and mapping out that cave. The Holy Spirit enables us to understand our map of Scripture as we combine it with our own experiences. And as an advocate gives us a comforting warmth that is actually protective and life-giving because you get, especially if you get wet in a cave at, uh, at 56 degree temperatures, you risk hypothermia. And so that warmth is life-giving. The Holy Spirit, I, th I think the Holy Spirit gives us our life. Sometimes life in this world can be so, so difficult. And sometimes we, we wonder, how are we going to make it? I bet we've wondered a lot during these last couple of months is how are we going to make it as a society? How are we going to make it as individual? But it is that life-giving presence of Jesus Christ in us that gives us hope, that gives us an outlook for a future in the midst of all the turmoil that we find ourselves in. The, the thing about this, this headlamp is, is it illuminates. It illuminates the cave as a, as a caver goes through it, but, but it, it, it's not just a, a tunnel vision. If you see here, the, the, um, the reflector is rather wide. Some of them are even wider than this one. And, and, and it throws the light out so that um, you, you end up with a lot of peripheral vision and not just that straight on vision that you would have like with flashlight. Jesus says, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. And just like for a caver or a miner, the headlamp is their lifeline. You, have you ever been in a dark cave in total darkness? You can't even see your hand in front of your face. It is so dark. It is your lifeline. 
And this is the thing about caves, they have dangers. There may be pits on the side of the path. You don't want to be just having that straight ahead tunnel vision, but you need to see the big picture to see if there, there's another tunnel going off on the side or if there's a pit or, or some kind of hazard on the side. And I think the Holy Spirit comes to help us envision the bigger picture of God's kingdom coming to earth because quite frankly, a lot of times we read, we read our Bibles, we read the Holy Scriptures and, and it's hard to make sense of it. And we don't understand, but it, it, it is asking the Holy Spirit to give us understanding and to give us vision it helps us see the big picture of what God is doing in God's redemptive story. And so our walk as a Christian is not just about walking to the foot of the cross, but our ability to carry our own crosses into the world so that all the world can hear the good news. And, 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 and this is all well and good. We, we can look at this headlamp, we can admire it, we can understand how it works, we can even uh, understand the chemical reaction that's going on in it, but it's useless. It's useless unless I put it on. I, don't, I, don't, I no longer have a, a caving helmet that I can put it on, but we can pretend. This whole lamp is useless if I just know about it and I just talk about it, but I've got to put it on. And I've got to then enter the cave with it. And so too, I talk about the Holy Spirit. We've got to not only seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to come into our lives, but then we've got to enter into the unknown darkness to bring the light of Christ. You know, a lot of times I, I hear people say, I, I don't know how to, I don't really know how to share Jesus. I don't know how to do evangelism. I don't know how to, how to make uh, this or that church program work. Do you think the disciples knew what they were doing when, when they were uh, gathered in the upper room and, and scared to death? And do and you think they knew what was going on on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came up on them and, 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 and sent them out? I don't think so. I don't think so. We've got to rely on the Holy Spirit to enable us to be who God calls us to be. And we've got to be willing to put that spirit on and to step into the unknown and share the message of Christ. This is the other thing. This lamp is dependent upon the reaction of two substances working together. Calcium carbide in the bottom and water in the top. And, and, and when those two substances meet, then it creates energy. And just like the water that drips into the calcium carbide to make a settle, and so I think the Holy Spirit drips into our lives and makes something new and powerful within us. And without that coming together of myself and the Holy Spirit, then I'm really nothing. Jesus says, you will know that I am in my Father, you are in me, and I am in you. I think Jesus present with us is our framing context for the world to see. Several years ago, the Washington Post did an experiment with Joshua Bell. Joshua Bell is arguably the greatest violinist of our day. And he put on jeans and a t-shirt and a ball cap and went down to the DC subway and he played his violin for 45 minutes. He played not just popular music on the violin, he played some of the greatest masterpieces for violin that have ever been written. And he played them on a 300 year old Stradivarius violin that was vi valued at $15 million. And he stood there and, and put a few dollars of seed money in his case and, and played is 1,066 people walked past in that subway station. And out of the 1,066 people, seven people 
actually stopped and listened. And in that 45 minutes, do you wonder how, how much money he collected? He made $35 if you don't count the $20 from the one person that stopped and recognized who he was. And, and the person that was writing this article for Washington Post um, uh, was also talking with, with curator at the National Gallery who handles priceless paintings. And this person's job was a framer of these priceless paintings. And he says, let's say I take one of the more abstract pieces out of its frame, maybe a piece that's valued at $5 million, and I bring it out of the museum and I bring it into a restaurant, one of those restaurants that has original works of art for sale, maybe by some industrious students in an art school somewhere, and just hang it on the wall there with that artwork. Nobody will notice it. And why is that? It is because the painting is out of its frame. It is out of its context. Joshua Bell, right after playing in the subway, had a sold out concert in Washington where people were paying $100 per ticket to get in to see him. But he was out of his context, so people didn't recognize him. And I think the Holy Spirit is how we find our context. Both of these pieces of art we've just talked about were outside of their frame or outside of their context. And we find our true value inside the frame of the Holy Spirit because we are made in the image of God and we are made to commune with God. But we've got to put God on and work together with the Holy Spirit in order to become who God has created us to be and in order to become who the world needs us to be in the name of Jesus Christ. The other thing about this headlamp is up here on top, it's got a flow regulator. Um, see that there? And, and you can move it back and forth to increase or decrease the amount of water that is dripping into the chamber. And as you increase the amount of water, you increase the reaction and increase the flow of acetylene gas. And there are times in our lives when we need to turn the lights up when we need to turn the lights of the Holy Spirit up in our lives. And there are times when, when maybe we can get by on a little less. In a cave, you know, if you're, if you're stopping to, to eat lunch in a cave and, and you don't need a whole lot of light, you, you turn that water flow down because you don't want to burn up your fuel by producing more light than you need. Um, but, but when you're moving on into unknown territory, you need to turn that light back up and give more light. And I, th I think it's the same way in our lives. We have those times in our lives when, 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 when we can do what we do in the name of Christ and we're okay. And there are times when, when, when we're in a, a darker dark and we need that brighter light, we need to call up on the power of the Holy Spirit, his presence and his power to help us along. The other thing about, uh, about this is um, this is a brass lamp. And you can make these lamps out of any kind of metal you wanted to, really. But the reason for a brass lamp is because brass doesn't interfere with the magnetic needle of a compass. And when you're exploring and mapping out a cave and you're using a compass and, and, you're, and you're holding that compass up close to the, to, the, um, to the light so that you can read it, you don't want some other metal to skew true north from that compass needle. We get our true north in life from Holy Spirit guidance. Jesus says, if you accept my commandments and obey, then you love me. The Holy Spirit encourages us and enables us to show love through obedience. The Holy Spirit guides us to that true north in ways that don't misdirect us. Because a lot of times we may think we know where true north is, and then we find out the needle's been uh, in the presence of something else that's changing its direction. 
But in those times of temptation in our life, we can turn up the flow of water, we can call out, we can ask for more of him, and we can know that the Holy Spirit's going to guide us in the right direction. So, Jesus. Jesus is preparing to leave the world in this story with his disciples, but he says he will never leave those who follow him. Because the world can't see Jesus, but we can. So we must show Jesus to the world. He is in you, and that is your context for living. And it's in the power of the Holy Spirit that we are enabled to obey and therefore show our love to Jesus Christ because he first loved us in accordance with the Father's love for him and for us. And so as we consider resetting the church and unlocking the future, we must first of all put on the Holy Spirit by seeking the Spirit out, letting the, the Holy Spirit commune with our spirit, and then enter into the unknown and the power of that Holy Spirit. And let the Holy Spirit enable us to obey and show our love to Jesus. We love God through obedience to his calling for us. And we recognize that without the Holy Spirit working with us, we're about as useless as this lamp has been sitting on my shelf the past four years. But as a miner and a caver, trust that lamp. We've got to trust Jesus and his Holy Spirit. So let us join in prayer. Oh Lord God, we are yours and you are ours. We pray that your Holy Spirit would just come upon us and enable us to recognize your presence. Enable us to live your presence in a way that the world will see and be awakened to the grace and glory of Jesus Christ. Lord, we seek to trust you and we seek to obey. In the name of Jesus, amen. We're gonna have a, a closing song here, uh, Trust and Obey. Give me a moment to switch screens to that.
and now may the grace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of his Holy Spirit go with you and go and proclaim the love of God the Father. Amen. That is awesome seeing everybody again.